In this video I will try to explain to you how commercial banks create money. But first we should look back to the effects of lending and borrowing on an economy. As explained in a previous video, more borrowing leads to more spending and causes more transactions. This development results in economic growth. But where does all this money come from? This is a reasonable question, especially considering that the amount of cash and resources available is limited. Let's look at this question in a bit more detail. Imagine you have 200 euros and deposit them in your bank account. Once the bank receives your money, they must divide it into two amounts. The first is the reserve requirement, which is a percentage of the 200 euros. The reserve requirement rate is imposed by the central bank and in Europe it is currently 10%, which we use in our example. Therefore, the reserve requirement in our example is 20 euros, which must be kept in the bank. This money cannot be lent. The second part, called the excess reserve, can be lent to business and private people. In our example, the bank can lend 180 euro of the deposited 200 euro. Well, let's look again at what just happened. Imagine you check your online banking and see the 200 euro you deposited in your bank account. On the other side, the borrower looks into his wallet and finds there the 180 euro. So the sum is 380 euro. Remember, only 200 euro were brought to the bank and now somehow another 180 euro were magically created out of thin air. Only 200 euro exists physically but the economy acts like there were 380 euros. But don't think that this is illegal or bad. This is part of the process of creating credit. Let's see what happens next. Our friend now can buy, for example, a new sofa with his 180 euro. The seller of the sofa can decide to deposit her 180 euro in the bank as well, and from which the 90%, 162 euro, may be lent to another person, and the cycle starts again. At this point, you might ask yourself if this is a stable process. The crucial factor here is the ability of all our borrowers to repay their debt on time so the bank can deposit the complete 200 euro into your account. So, let's see the requirements that must be fulfilled to avoid any problems in the process. When the borrowed money is invested cleverly in a healthy economy, profits are made and debts are paid. Then the money created from thin air has helped borrowers and the economy to grow. In our example, the borrower buys a sofa to renovate his bar, causing an increase in customers and profits. Due to that, the 180 euro created out of thin air are recovered and injected in the economy. But we should still ask, how much money can be created from the initial 200 euro? The money multiplier is the calculation of the amount of money generated by banks from the reserve requirement. The number 1 must be divided by the reserve requirement of the economy and multiplied by the available money for credit. Let's apply this to our example with a reserve requirement rate of 10%, which results in the number 10, which is multiplied by the initial 180 euro in our example. In total, at a reserve requirement rate of 10%, 1,800 euro may be created out of thin air from 200 euro deposited in a bank account. Well, I should mention that the whole 1,800 euro is only created when the new money finds its way back to a bank to be lent again, just like in our example. Anyhow, the generation of credit is a way to increase the money available in the economy to permit the generation of more money. In my next video I will present what characterizes a central bank. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.